In Allah's mercy, a comforting embrace, bringing peace and hope to everyone's space, bringing peace and hope to everyone's space. The immense mercy of Allah Almighty. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Respected viewers of Madani Chen, we once again welcome you in our program The Immense Mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala In this program we talk about the immense and great mercy of our Lord Azza wa Jal So much to learn from, it is Ashara of Rahma in Ramadan Al-Kareem You're watching this program so sit in front of Madani Channel's TV screen, ask your family members, they can also come and sit. Very short and brief program, but so much to learn from. Before we proceed towards our topic of the day, let's make few good intentions. My Shaykh Tariqat, Amir of Ahl Sunnah, Hazrat Allama, Maulana, Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri. Dhamad Barakatuhum al has given us a beautiful mindset that we should make good intentions before we perform any permissible task or any good deed. I'm presenting this program and you're watching. Let's make few good intentions. We'll listen and I will present for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember what we learn, act upon and pass this knowledge on to others too. And remember, the more intentions you make, the more reward you will attain, insha'Allah, azza wa Respectively, us today, insha'Allah, we'll be talking about a beautiful hikayat, which is related to a great waliya, friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidatuna Rabi'a Basariya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. Her servant, she mentions that when the time of passing away of Sayyidatuna Rabi'a Basariya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha approached, she called me and said, O Abda, do not give news of my passing away to anyone and give coffin to me, shroud me in this very attire which I am wearing, the clothing she was wearing, a jubba. And this was the same jubba attire which she used to do ibadah in. She used to wear and perform worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she said that we gave her kafan, we shrouded her in that same very jubba and one shawl which she used to wear. After approximately one year, I saw her in my dream, the servant, she says. And I saw Sayyidatuna Rabi'a Basariya Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayha, she was wearing a beautiful green attire and that was made of thick silk and I had not seen such beautiful splendid attire before. I asked Rabia, what happened to your kafan, your jubba and shawl which we shrouded you in? She mentioned the qasam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, my kafan was changed with this beautiful attire which you are looking right now. And my coffin, which you shrouded me in, was folded and preserved. And I was given the maqam in a'la illijin, Allahu Akbar. And on the day of judgment, I will be rewarded against my very coffin, which I was shrouded in. SubhanAllah. Respected viewers of Madani Chen. Then she says, I asked, would you perform worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to attain the same blessing what you are receiving? She replied, what you're seeing is the karam. This is the blessing. This is the reward in arm gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his friends. I asked, Abda binti Abi Kilab rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. What about her? How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat her? It was replied, Alas, we remained behind and she got great ranks in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she stepped forward even from us. 
I asked, how can, in this dunya, your maqam and rutba status was greater than her? And then she replied, she never bothered, how did she do her evening and mornings? Meaning she was totally indulged and involved in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then I asked, what about Sayyidina Abu Malik Zaygan rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi? How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat him? It was replied, whenever he want, he can behold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the reward he got. Allahu Akbar. And then I asked, what about Sayyidina Mishr bin Mansur alayhi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi? It was replied, wah, wah. What can you talk about him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him more than his own hopes. Subhanallah. I asked, please tell me some action which I can perform and I can get the proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qurb of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. She said, do dhikr in abundance. Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance. Very soon, through its barakah, you will get salvation in your grave. This was the piece of advice. Sayyida Tuna Rabi'a Basariya Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayha gave to her servant who saw her in dream. Respected views of Madhavi This is the rahmat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is the karam. This is the blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is immense, is great, is beyond our intellect. We cannot comprehend the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how Allah tabarak wa ta'ala rewards his beloved. Those they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those they have got trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those they do sabr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those they pay shukr in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those they spend their days and nights, evenings and mornings in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those they remain busy in worshipping and doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what they get. This is the reward they attain from the court of Allah. As you heard regarding few awliya kiram, how they were treated in the court of Allah after their passing away. We should attain this lesson from this beautiful hikayat what we learn, this narration, what we heard. We got this piece of advice from Sayyidatuna Rabi'a Basariya Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayha. Further, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Abu Qasim Abdul Karim Habazin Qushayri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayha, he narrates, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I used to make dua for Hazrat Rabi'a Basariya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. And once I saw her in my dream, so when he says I used to make dua for her, meaning she had left this mortal world, and I used to remember her in my duas. We also remember our loved ones in our duas. We also send them isali thawab. We recite Quran, we do hasanat, we do charity. Through these good actions, we remember our loved ones. And we do khatam, we do fatiha. We remember our loved ones in our isali salah, in our dua. So this is how that Buzulk says, I used to remember Rabi'a Basariya, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha, in my dua. And once I saw her in my dream, she said, your gifts reach so here, gifts me the Isa al the dua. Reach us in the trays of Noor, subhanAllah. And they are covered in the handkerchiefs of Noor, subhanAllah. Respected views of Madhani This is the barakah, this is the blessing when we send our loved ones Isa al -Thabab. When we remember them in our du'as, when we do some sort of charity on their behalf, when we do some sadaqah on their behalf, when we send them these gifts, so these gifts, they reach to them in the trays of noor, covered in the handkerchiefs of, made of noor. And angel, 
may take and present this gift to our loved ones. This is how Isa al thawab reaches. So we should remember our loved ones. Every Thursday, every year, most probably every day you can remember. In your du'as, you should remember your loved ones. If your parents, they have passed away, remember them in your du'as. Remember them in your good actions and charitable causes, what you're doing. You should do some on their behalf. And inshallah, this sadaqatul jariya, in your form, Right? The pious offspring, this will inshallah reach to your loved ones, your parents also. And it is also mentioned when we send Ithali Sabab to our loved ones, right? these gifts when we send Sayyiduna Jibreel Amin alayhi salam, take that Ithali Sabab in a tray made of nur, and he alayhi salatu salam stands next to the cover of our loved ones. And it is said, O oh, resident of this grave, this gift has been sent by your loved ones for you as a hadiya. Accept it. When he listens, he becomes happy. Whereas his neighbors, they become sad because they get deprived of that Isa al Maybe their loved ones have not sent when they see that our neighbor, he got Isa al from his loved ones. So respect viewers of Madhishan, we should not only perform good actions, we should remember our loved ones also in our prayers, in our du'as. Hazrat Sayyidatuna Adda binti Abu Shabbal rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha, she was also a very pious lady and she was servant of Sayyidatuna Rabi'a Basariya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. She says, Sayyidatuna Rabi'a Basariya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha would perform nawafil whole night. And when it was the time of Subhi Sadiq, so in the initial part of Subhi Sadiq, she would rest on her musalla. And when little light would start spreading on the horizon, she would get up all of a sudden and would say to her nafs, O oh, nafs, for how long will you remain sleeping? When will you wake up? Very soon you'll go to such a sleep that you won't be able to wake up until the day of judgment. She had same routine until she departed from this mortal world. This was the taqwa. This was the piety of Sayyidatuna Rabi'a Basariya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. And we heard that what maqam, what rutba, what status she got from the merciful Lord Azza wa Jal. And how her kafan was changed into a beautiful, splendid green attire in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Spectacles. We should also strive. We should also work hard. We should also pray. We should also worship. We should also do some sort of action which can get us closer in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about our pious predecessors, when you talk about their zuhd, their taqwa, their piety, their excellence in, in, in worship. The reason behind is that a person like myself, we all should gain some sort of lesson from their seerah, what life and legacy they've spent and left behind. We should learn something from that. We should also start practicing, start just listening, and then we have the same routine. May Allah give me the topic to follow the footsteps of our pious predecessors. Amin, and to all of us. Let me mention a brief introduction of Sayyidatuna Rabi'a Basariya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. Her name was Rabi'a bint Ismail Adawiya Basariya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. She was very, very, very famous, pious woman of Basra. And she was born in Basra. She was very much famous and Known for her riyazat, ibadat, his, his worship, and the way she used to strive to gain proximity in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her zuhd and taqwa, her piety, was also known at that very time. There are many, many vaqiat which are famous regarding her taqwa and zuhd. Now, at the end, let's 
take some piece of advice from a personality who got great status in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who was known for her zuhud and taqwa and ibadah. Now what piece of advice she's left, her sayings, let's take some piece of advice for us, inshallah. When a person performs any action with ikhlas, here it is meant, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals his own faults to that person, hence that person keeps indulged in looking his own or her own faults and he remains unworried about other people's fault. This is what is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. It is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we remain busy in searching our own faults. How can I rectify myself? How can I correct myself? How can I fix this bad quality of mind rather than keep busy in searching faults in others? Trying to keep on just rectifying others, thinking about others. Yes, respect you, Rosie. Sadly, this is the reality. When I'm talking about certain things, when you hear from Mubalirin of Dawat Islami or Ulama Ikram or scholars of the Islam, any specific problem which is being mentioned, we start thinking about someone else. If only that person or that she or he was listening right now, she or he would have benefited from what is being said right now. We start thinking about others. Why don't we start thinking about our own selves? What piece of advice shall I take from this? How can I rectify myself? Do I possess this fault within my personality or not? Should I not rectify myself rather than thinking about others? This attitude, this behavior, this mindset needs changing. That only we are able to focus within our personality. Because on the Day of Judgment we will be held accountable. And further, what a beautiful piece of advice this was given. Whenever I heard Azan, I remembered the announcer of the Day of Judgment. And whenever I felt hot weather, I remembered the heat of the Day of Qiyamah. What a beautiful, comprehensive piece of advice this is. Nowadays, Five daily prayers rather than calls us, proclaims loud Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We are invited, Hayya ala salah, we are invited for falah. Muaddin says, Hayya ala al falah, come towards salvation. Five times this announcement is made, but we remain negligent. Some don't offer salah at all, let alone going to masjid. Allahu Akbar. So what she said, that when I hear Azan, this announcer who announces, who calls, Allahu Akbar, I remember the announcer who will be on the Day of Judgment. And further it is said that the heat of this dunya, whenever I feel, I remember the heat of the heat after. And this is what my Shaykh Tariqat Amir of Ali Sunnah, Dawud Barakatul Aliya does, only a Quran, they've got this mindset. Anything they feel or see in this dunya, they relate to the matters of hereafter. And this keeps them focused towards their goal, which is the salvation of the hereafter. This is month of Ramadan and Kareem. Ashara of Rahmah is continued. We can also attain Rahmat. Rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, current blessing, that is being distributed in this ashara. Seek rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your merciful Lord Azza wa Jal in this ashara of mercy. This is the main purpose of this program. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala shower countless blessings, mercies upon our loved ones, those they have departed from this mortal world and upon us and upon our family. That's all for today. Tomorrow we'll be back with another beautiful episode in this beautiful program, the immense mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep reciting Salat upon Nabi. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
in Allah's mercy a comforting embrace bringing peace and hope to everyone's space bringing peace and hope to everyone's space the immense mercy of Allah almighty